we want to go ahead and get started. Hey, go ahead if unless you miss answer, mute your uh, your screen. It's the the far left little speaker button. It should be red, and then Miss Answer is going to do the Google Classroom PD and just kind of go over it. And you will get your PD credit for it. We've got to do this once every few weeks. Uh, the system is kind of requiring us to do that. So uh, once we do that, I'm kind of taking notes and I'll turn everybody's name in and uh, they're gonna give you PD credit. So um, you ready to answer? Yeah, I think so. Let me see if I can get my uh, screen to share real quick, hold on. Okay. Are y'all seeing my browser? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, so, Mr. Sprinkle asked me to um, kind of walk you guys through Google Classroom real quick, although at this point, I feel like we're all pretty much professionals by our own standards. Um, but I'm just gonna real quick, 30 minutes tops, just kind of go through some key factors in the classroom, some features that you may or may not already know about. Um, as you can see here, I have all five of my classes already set up. Um, you can see how many students are here. Um, if you click this little jagged arrow, this shows you your grade book, um, which I'll show y'all later. And this shows you the files that are in the, um, in the class that you've uploaded. Um, on this page, Ms. Miller actually, actually asked me this the other day. Um, and some of y'all might have the same question. You cannot organize your classes unless you just drag them around. So I just put mine in class order and then put the extra ones down at the bottom. I don't know if y'all are an organizational freak like I am, but this made me feel a little bit better. Um, as far as setting up your classes go, um, there's that plus sign over there. I'm not going to go over that. I'm pretty sure that y'all have all set up your classes already. Um, just make sure that you've set up one class for each class period. That makes it a lot easier for you to grade your kids' assignments. Um, I made a demo class, and I'm going to switch back and forth between the demo class and my actual classrooms to show y'all different features. Um, Ms. Sheffield is our star student in our demo class. She has uh, so kindly completed some assignments on there for me as a student, so y'all can kind of see what it looks like when a student um, does things on the class. So let me go ahead and open that one up first. Um, so when you first create your class, um, this is your what's called the stream. So this is where you can post announcements. Um, when you add assignments, it also shows the assignments that have been posted here. Um, so you can see that I had uploaded um, or posted a, an announcement here and Ms. Sheffield so kindly responded to it for me so y'all could see what that looks like. Um, and if you look as you hover your mouse over the comment here, there's a little reply arrow. When you click that, you can respond directly to a student and students can do the same thing as well. Um, so you want to make sure that they know that feature is available. Um, and you can see that I've responded directly back to Ms. Sheffield there. So um, when you get to this home page, though, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is check your settings up here, this little gear. Um, I've set my class up to my own personal preferences. You can do whatever you want with it. But here you'll see your, your class name. You can always change it if you want to. You can see your code to copy and paste to remind however you want to do it. Um, as far as the stream now, I think everybody's figured this out already because I saw the Facebook um, conversation going on about it. But it, I highly, highly recommend that you change your setting for the stream to students can only comment because if you keep it on students can post and comment, they can post announcements on there too. And some of us have already figured out that kids cannot do that responsibly. Um, or if you really don't want them commenting at all, you can just put only teachers can post or comment. Um, as far as classwork on the stream, 
right now I have it to where students can see notifications when I post um, assignments on the stream, but you can hide that if you don't want them to see it. That's totally up to you. Um, show deleted items, that's up to you. Guardian summaries, that's something that's new to Google Classroom, so I need to actually do my own research on that, on what exactly that is. Meet is also new. I saw it pop up last night, so they just added it. Um, it's kind of like what we're doing now. It's video conferencing. Um, again, do some research on it, see how safe it is, because I know like with the Zoom web conferencing, video conferencing, people are Zoom bombing. They're coming in when they're not invited and doing all kinds of things. So just make sure that if you want to use Google Meet, just make sure it's safe for your kids. Um, as far as grades go, um, we all know that we're to um, grade by a 4060 system now um, because we're only doing minor and major grades. If you want your Google Classroom gradebook to line up with what you're doing in your iNow gradebook, you can choose where it says overall grade calculation. You can do weighted by category. And then down here, it will let you add a category so you can label it minor, 40%, major, 60%. And um, so whenever you create assignments, which I'll show you that in a second, you can add them to whatever grade category you just created. Um, so you'll click save here and that gets you all set up for your classroom. Now, as far as classwork goes, again, I know y'all probably figured out a lot of this stuff, but just kind of go over it very quickly. Um, I want to touch on real quick the Google Calendar feature. Please use that because it kind of, it covers your butt as far as um, making sure students know when assignments are due and what assignment is actually due. So if you look here, I've, I've got the first two weeks of assignments added, if it pops up. Um, so I've got, this week I had my kids view some start here documents like a syllabus and what do I expect for them on discussion boards and stuff like that. And then I've also labeled that uh, module one, my first set of assignments are starting next Monday and they're due by next Friday. So please make sure you use that. It just kind of covers your butt and you can always, you know, if a student says, I don't know when this assignment's due, you could say, check the Google calendar. Um, so here, in my classwork uh, tab, I have some assignments uploaded and uh, I would recommend, of course, this is just me because again, I like organization. Uh, for each standard that you have to cover for your subject, I would suggest giving it a topic name, um, which is what I've done here. I've called it demo topic. Now, if I go back to one of my classes here. So our first standard is a literature standard. So I labeled it under classwork um, folk tales because that's what they're going to be doing. And you can see here that I've got, um, I'm calling them modules. And in those modules are chunks of assignments. So the way I have module one set up, I'll open it up so y'all can see it bigger. Um, So the way I have module one set up, uh, in this module, they have to watch a video about what a folktale is. They have to read a couple of stories. I've got some, some supplemental videos to go along with it. And then um, their actual activity that they have to do for the week is down here. And so they'll just have the whole week to complete this module. And then they'll submit that assignment on this module. And um, I'll give it a grade. So. Um, Going back to my demo class, I've got three different types of assignments that you can add. So when you click this create button, you've got assignment, quiz assignment, question, material, reuse, post, and then topic was what I was talking about a second ago. Um, so the first assignment that I uploaded here, I love this feature. It's a discussion board. Like if you if you did discussion boards in your college classes, that's pretty much what this is. So if uh, let me see if I can get it to open up the right way. So 
it's hard to see it as a teacher. You can't really see it in student form, but what they'll see is they'll see this question here. So I asked Ms. Sheffield, what is your favorite food and why? Um, and so when she opened that up, she would have the comment feature below it and she was able to post her, um, her response to that question. Let's see if I can pull it up. So this is her response, very eloquently written, beautiful, perfect writing because, you know, she's not one of our eighth graders. Um, and if you look here, it says zero turned in, zero assigned, one graded because she's the only one in this class and there's no, nobody else I'm looking for. Um, I'll show y'all what the grade looks like for that in a second. Um, this is an example of just a basic assignment that you can upload. This is what I was showing y'all in my class just a second ago with folk tales. You have, um, you have your description here, your instructions, and then you can attach different um, files or internet resources or YouTube videos um, that the kids will need to complete that assignment. So if you click add here, you can add from your Google Drive. Please make sure you are utilizing that Google Drive feature. It is so easy. Um, you log into it with the same login that you use to create your Google Classroom, so your, your MCPSS email. Um, please use that. It's like using your desktop, except it's on the internet, so you can never lose your files. So please make sure you're using that. Um, you can post a link, so you guys already know you can attach Nearpods, which you can see here. I've attached a Nearpod. Um, you can attach uh, pretty much anything with a, a web link. So just do your research on those things uh, as far as web links go. You can attach a regular file from your desktop and you can attach a YouTube video, which I've done here. So um, the kids can see that and they will complete the assignment. And again, they'll just submit it there. Um, notice whenever I created this assignment, I can go over to four and I can select, you can't see it here, let me, let me show you on my assignment that I did for my actual classes. Um, for four, I can select all of the students and before I post it, I'll show you one that I haven't posted yet. Before you post it, you can select to add it to all of your classes at one time. So you don't, for five classes, you don't have to keep repeating your steps. You do it one time in one class and you can add it to all of your classes. Um, this becomes a problem when you want to schedule your assignment. So if you look at the top button here where it says assign in that drop down menu, you've got assign, schedule, and save draft. You can see that schedule has been blanked out because um, it, I can't do the schedule for when I have it assigned to multiple classes. I don't know why they have it as that feature, but it is what it is. So right now I just have it saved as draft and I'll have to remind myself to come back in and post it when it's, when it's due. That's my second week's module that my kids will be doing. Um, you can, again, for grade category, when you're creating these assignments, you can assign it to a certain category. You can give it the points that you want it to be out of. I always do 100, I know some teachers do it differently. Um, please make sure you give your assignments due dates. As we all know, we have to have our assignments posted by two. Our kids have to have their assignments graded by or posted themselves by two on Fridays. We have to have them graded by three. So please make sure you give it a due date um, so the kids know that you're serious. When it says topic, um, it pops up with the topic that I created, so demo topic, or I can create a new topic. Um, and then if you want to, you can post a rubric if it's applicable. So um, then you click save and it posts to the stream. Um, and then demo test. What I did was I created a test using Google Forms. Um, that's pretty much the easiest way for Google Classroom um, to create a test. and. Google Forms is really cool because you can create different types of tests. Um, let me see if I can show y'all. Ms. Sheffield did 
poorly on this test. You're about to see her grade, bless her heart. Um, so you can, when you open up the test, you can title it, you can add different types of questions. So you can change your question, multiple choice, check boxes, short answer, paragraph, all kinds of different options. So play around with Google Forms because that's probably gonna be your um, best bet as far as having tests on Google Classroom. Um, and I know I'm going kind of quickly, so if you have questions, I see that y'all are posting them in the chat. I'll check those at the end here, so just keep, um, keep posting those. Um, your People tab up here shows you your students that are in your class. Y'all have probably already figured that out. You can add teachers. Please make sure that you have added Mr. Sprinkle and Mr. Smith to your teachers. Um, I remember when we left, they wanted uh, to be added to all of our classes. So if you haven't done that already, please make sure you do that. And all you have to do is just click the little person with the plus sign here on their shoulder and then type the person's email that you want to invite. Um, you can see here that Ms. Sheffield is a student. She joined using the code for my class. Um, if I click on her name here, it shows me her overall grade, which is nice. So that way, if I want to just look at one specific student, I don't have to open up all of my kids. It shows me over here with filters, her turned to end assignments. Um, you returned with grade, all of her assignments, and she doesn't have any missing assignments because she completed everything. So um, going back, let me show you guys the grade book. Um, so here, it, obviously, if you had more kids in your class, you would have them all listed down the side here. You can still see your class averages. I like to see class averages so I can see where my classes are standing. Um, and then you can see next to each individual student their class average. Ms. Sheffield's kind of struggling a little bit. She didn't do too hot on that demo test. Um, and we'll look at those individually. So if you click on the assignment up top, it will open it. And you can see all of the students who have done the assignment. So this was Ms. Sheffield's uh, response to the demo question. Um, I gave her a grade right here. You can type directly right here. And once you type the grade, you click this, uh, the three dots right here and you click return and it will return the grade back to the student so they can see um, how they did. Now here you can see where I've responded publicly. So I said, it's cool that you traveled so much. I agree that chicken is a great food no matter where you, wherever you go. Everybody can see that response. But down here, I've given two private, uh, I've given a private comment. I said, good job. However, you never start off asking a question, which is like a big golden rule in my classroom. So um, nobody else except for me and Ms. Sheffield can see this conversation down here, but everybody else can see this conversation. Um, and if any student were to reply to her post here, then I would be able to see their responses here as well. Um, so if you like discussions, I would highly suggest using the question feature for that instead of the stream, because um, obviously it's a lot easier to grade because it pops right up. Um, going back to the grades here, um, the demo test, now, the cool thing about forms, this is another reason why you wanna use forms. You can import grades. So as soon as your students are done taking the test, you come here on the grade book, you click import grades, and it pops that grade right into your grade book for you. You don't have to type a single thing. And then I'll, again, you come back over here, you click that return option, and it sends it back to the kids. So Google Forms is gonna be your best friend as far as tests go. Um, and then the demo assignment, same thing. So Ms. Sheffield has uh, submitted the assignment. I click on it um, and it pops up very slowly. You can add comments to her, to your students' assignments. Play with the comments features right here. Um, it'll explain to you how it works once you log on for the first time. But you can see that my comments to her are in green here. Um, and she can see these too. I've already returned it back to her. So she can see these comments. She can see why she made a 70 out of 100 on here because these are my critiques. Um, and then again, once you're done, you'll click the return button here and it sends it back to the students. Um, 
So let me hop over to my, one of my actual classes real quick so you can kind of see what I've done. These are all suggestions um, on how you can set up your class or post for your class. Um, Cause I, you know, I, everybody teaches differently. I'm not telling you to teach a certain way, but um, I would suggest posting at least a weekly video of yourself commenting and previewing that week's assignments. Um, as we all know, middle schoolers have the attention span of a squirrel um, and reading is not one of the things that really works for them. So um, while yes, they do still have to read, I would also suggest giving them that video so they can have an audio um, description of what's going on for the week too. Um, I've done that for this week. I went ahead and posted for next week's assignments this morning so they can see um, my week one preview, um, and then they can also see week one's assignments that have been posted. They can see that down here. Um, so that is all I have for that. So I know that y'all have been posting chats, so let me open those up for you guys. Um, and if you have a uh, verbal question too, go ahead and unmute and ask me while I'm scrolling through here. I wanted to know if there was a way that you can translate um, in Google Classroom for the ELL kids. Um, I have not found a translate feature because I also have a bunch of um, ELL kids myself. So um, my suggestion is type up whatever you want to type up and then use the Google Translate feature mm -hmm. to um, make a, a Spanish version of it and then post it separately. I think, honestly, that's probably what I'm going to have to do too for some of my kids. Is it going to make sense just to make a separate classroom just for the ELL kids? Um, great question. Mr. Smith, do you have any insight on that? Because I know with our iReady, um, they have um, Spanish version as well. Yeah. And so I can just um, download that and put a Spanish copy of whatever we do. And um, if it was iReady, like they would just be doing all iReady material. Yeah. Um, um, I think if you wanted to make a Google Classroom and just make it as like a resource for your ELL kids, that'd probably be a good idea. Okay. And I don't know if yeah, I necessarily... <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw it, but Miss Two has classes for each level of her kids. You can ask her to um, add you to it, and she's got all kinds of um, resources for her kids of each of those levels. So if you if you're part of that group of us who have a bunch of um, ELL kids, you might want to talk to her about that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, hey, you can so also gonna... oh, no, Miss Hansard. Mm -hmm. um, you can also. If you have in those individual assignments for those ELL kids, just assign that to those kids. Right. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I did, I did mention, forget to mention that there is a way, and I'll show y'all for my fifth period. I have a lot of um, Spanish kids. So um, if you're still looking at the screen, what I've done is I've made a separate test for next week for my um, ELL kids. And if you notice here under folk tales, I have two separate tests listed. One of them is for the regular kids. And then the other one is a modified version for my ELL. So if I click on one, let me open it up real quick and show y'all how I did this. Um, so what I did was I chose the one class. So I chose just fifth period under four here. And then notice that I have one student uh, clicked. Um, he's my only Spanish kid that's joined this class so far. So that's why he's the only one clicked. But once my other ones join, I'll click them. They're going to be the only ones that can see this version of the test. So if you have to make modified tests um, or assignments or whatever, you can use this feature to assign to just specific kids. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going through 
And if we run out of time, because I know we, I've got to go to the next one at 1045, the next meeting. So um, if we run out of time, please feel free to email me questions and I'll be glad to answer. Um, Ms. Rivera says, does the calendar only apply to that specific classroom? It doesn't post my personal one. No, it does. First off, it will sync up because you're logged in through your MCPSS email. It will sync up to all your MCPSS classrooms. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, it does not post your personal one because that's not the one that you're logged in under. Uh, let's see. Do I have to add assignments to calendar or does it go auto? You don't have to add assignments to the calendar. Um, you can just add them straight to your Google Classroom, Mr. Lee. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Will the assignments automatically go to Google Drive? If you created them using a Google feature, they will be in your Google Drive. So if I were to go to my drive right now, um, and I've, of course, organized my drive by folders. So when it pops up, you'll see that I've got all these different um, folders and I have, um, my first standard is RL 8.9. So everything that I'm doing for that standard, I have it listed under here. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those things automatically synced up to my drive. And some of them, like this folktale stories activity, I did directly in my drive. Then I uploaded it to my classroom. There's more, to, more than one way to skin a cat. So, I mean, you can do it however you want, but they should automatically go to your Google Drive. Um, let's see. Uh, Ms. Copeland says, is there a way they can send videos on Google Classroom or do they just need to email them to me? Um, you would have to create a, an assignment under classwork. And when you do that, it should give them the option to add an attachment. If that doesn't work out though, um, yeah, I guess they would just have to email them to you. That may be the easiest option. Um, and I think that's it. Does anybody else have any more questions? I don't see any more in the in the chat unless I skipped over one. And you, uh, you can make a video of yourself and put it in the Google Classroom, correct? Yes, I've, I've done okay. that for my classes so far. Okay, that's what you I can see those in the screen. Yeah, I did uh, mine using iMovie and then uploaded it to YouTube and just posted a YouTube link. But again, more than one way to skin a cat. You can do it however you want. So you, you did it through YouTube and then just posted it through your Google Classroom? Yes, sir. But you can't, like Google Classroom doesn't have an icon where you can video yourself and do a video through no, it? Not, not through Google Classroom. You have to use um, whatever kind of videoing system you have available on your on your computer already. And we may, Mr. Sprinkle's going to look into it, but he, I think they're discouraging us from using YouTube for some reason. So we'll have to look into that. He'll, he'll, okay. he'll find out about that more. I don't know why. But another thing is, once you get past, this is for everyone, once you get past your due date, because I know like language arts may be having to grade, you know, essays or just put one in the computer for your right now so that um, they'll know that you're actually keeping up with your grade book. And then as you're getting their grades, you can just uh, put the grades in. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, and then also, if you have a SPED teacher, like Ms. McCutcheon has, Mr. Grantham, uh, we want you to go ahead and make them like your co-teacher. And I'm gonna make it the um, SPED teacher's responsibility to kind of accommodate the SPED kids on your test. So that y'all have a lot going on, but that's kind of what they can do. And they can kind of take care of their case manager kids. And uh, you can do the regular kids, they can do the their, their SPED kids but you just got to make them like one of your co-teachers so they can have access to your test and modify it. That's only if you have like an inclusion teacher. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for me or Ms. Hanser or anyone else? Yes, the kids are like number one. Now look, I know you have a due date, but if they turn it in two weeks after the due date, we're, we're, not going, we're not going to take off like 10 points every week. We're still going to give them credit. Because this isn't a regular classroom. This is a whole different spectrum. 
the whole point of this is to help the kids and we're, we're just trying to make it through and provide them as much information and as we can you know it's an ideal so we're, we're not failing kids if you're giving tests and the kids are failing then there's something wrong we should be more providing them with information so they can move on to the next grade in the future that makes sense No, you don't have to post videos of yourself. You know, and I answered a lot of calls yesterday. If they go to the, the Callsy Facebook page, that's an easy way for them to go through, uh, to find a way to get, still, we still got kids that aren't on Google Classroom yet. Go to the Callsy Facebook page. And I think it's the second post that's on the, the Callsy Facebook page, and it'll tell you how to get to the, um, They'll get in there and get to Google Classroom and all the codes are on there. Anybody uh, else I don't think the parents are joining the classes. Um, they can, so if you go to the people tab on your um, Google Classroom, you can see where some of your kids have probably already invited their guardians because you'll, you'll see their emails listed to your kid's name. They're not necessarily joined in your class that way, but they will get emails every time you post an assignment or um, post a comment on the stream or something like that. So parents aren't using the codes like the kids are. When, um, as soon as possible on your kids who don't have who aren't in your classroom, who hadn't joined your codes, I guess try to get it by Friday, which I guess is the day. So at the end of the day, if you can, or this weekend, send it to me. And next week, I'm gonna be at the school. Me and Mr. Sprinkles are gonna start passing out. We got a lot of kids who don't have computers or devices. So we, we still, we're still a few days away from kids. Bit. Some kids are already in there, but there's a bunch that don't even have a way to get into your classroom. I probably called 15 parents yesterday uh, that didn't have a device and that they're wanting to come to school next week, but we haven't received a lot of devices from central office yet to be, a, to be able to pass them out to them. So we're kind of behind now. We're not behind. They're behind on trying to get it organized and give it to us. So we're just going to, have to be flexible. And um, that's why we're not pushing the due dates as much. And the grades need to be an eye now. The, the Google Classroom, <laughs> And the main thing is I now, because that's where when we do get grades at the end, if we get the grades, it'll be through the I now. Somebody asked a question about grades. The main thing I'm gonna be checking is your I now grade book. Anybody else have questions, comments? I have a question, Mr. Smith. Okay. Um, on Wednesday, Sprinkle said that grades are due by Friday at 3 p.m. Yesterday, Ms. Streeter said grades are due Friday at 2 p.m. Is it two or three? Probably two. Go with, go with two, two o'clock, what Ms. Streeter said. And look, I know a lot of it because your grades are going, we're trying to get you to turn your grades, the, the students to turn their grades in on Friday. So you're not going to have a lot of time to grade it. The biggest so thing is. Ms. Streeter told us to have it due by Thursday at 3 p.m. so we could have Friday to grade. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's probably the best thing to do. And our biggest concern is central office is going to be watching us and looking in the grade books. And we don't want to have half the school with no grades in the computer on that Friday. And um, we get a phone call saying that me, you, and everyone else isn't doing their job. So that's why you're probably better off assigning it for Thursday, getting the grades in by Friday. If you run out of time or you don't get everything graded because you're grading essays or open-ended questions mm -hmm. or whatever you're doing, you may just want to put a one in the computer. And even if you're doing it over the weekend or the next week, you can just add your grades as you go. Okay, so thank just, you. It just needs to look like you're you're in the computer logged in, you're you're doing grades and you're doing what we're supposed to do. Mr. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Um, yes, 
If they don't turn their work in, just leave it blank. Give them a one. Give them a one, and uh, we'll, we'll, we don't we don't know at the end what they're going to do. But right now, just give them a one. And if they turn it in late, or if it eventually comes, uh, put it in the uh, grade book. Because there's a lot of kids that have packets, and we really don't even know how you're going to get the packet. You know, I don't know if they're going to bring it to school, and we're going you're going to have to come up here once a week to get packets. So there's still a lot of unknowns. So just put a one for now, and then we'll have to go go with it as it goes. You know. Can brain pop be loaded into Google uh, Classroom? Ms. Mose, Ms. Andrews, did y'all know that? Um, I believe it can, it, at least through the link feature. Uh, if it can be added directly, that would probably be the best way to do it on assignments. I'll try that. Anybody else have questions, comments? I guess I'm a little confused about the deadline dates um, because Miller was saying you had to give them the whole entire week till Friday at two to do their work and then you had your grades in at three. But now you're telling us to give them the due date on Thursday? Well, you, the, the biggest thing is on Fridays, three o'clock's fine. Have it done by three o'clock on Friday. Okay. But the reason why she said that is because some of the language arts, I think, were yeah, having she to do said more they work. Could have, yeah, she said they could have theirs due by the essays on Thursday, but the other yeah. work due by Friday. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. You can do it whenever. You can assign it whatever you want to. The biggest thing is by Friday, you need to have your grades in the computer. So okay. if you want to do it Wednesday, that's fine. Just Or Friday, but just make sure you have some grades in the computer every Friday. Okay. And that's really a central office thing to make sure, because they're going to be looking and we want to make sure that they know that Causey is doing what we're supposed to do. So okay. however you want to do it, just make sure on Friday you have your grades in. All right. Thank you. No. Also, I'm sorry, um, Ms. Miller did mention that we should go ahead and post our assignments of Thursday and then give them to the following um, Friday to complete it. That way they can work over the weekend as well. So, uh, this Thursday, say that again. Okay. She's saying like, um, like we go ahead and post it yesterday and then it'll be due like this coming up Friday. That way they have over the weekend to work on it, which you told us yesterday. So I think sure. maybe if we did it from Thursday to Thursday, would that be acceptable? They still have a you know a full week to do it and we still have an extra day to grade stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. no, that's fine. I mean, I don't I don't think that's a problem. And like I said, the biggest thing is just have your grades in by Friday. Okay. And it's really not us as much as like I said, central office is going to start looking and we want to make sure that we're doing what they're asking us to do. Yes, sir. Anybody else have questions before Ms. Hansford has to leave? And if you think of something else after we leave the meeting, you can email me or email Ms. Hansford or uh, me, whatever. Uh, if, if it's about Google Classroom, you need to email Ms. Hansford. If it's about anything else, you can email me. But like, and I, and I think I get my own. I'll be glad to do a video conference with you too. If you need to share your screen with me and we can walk through something. So just let me know that too when you email me. And I think I gave everybody my cell phone. So if you need to call me anytime, also, you can call me. Um, but email or call me, and I'm always uh, have my email and my phone with me, and I'll be happy to help you. And like I said, a lot of it is, is kind of fluid, and we're trying to figure it out as we go. Mr. Don't stress. Smith. Don't stress. It's not that big a deal. We're going to make it through it. Mr. Smith, I didn't get your phone number because I've been in different classes. Right. Can you write it? You want to write it down? Yes. 455-9313. Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Smith, I need to go ahead and go because yep. I got to join that next one. Go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Hanser. That was a no good job. Thank you all.